Welcome to On the Road with Riley. We're back this week with a long-awaited episode. We are finally going to the birthplace of jazz, New Orleans. Today we get to hear from clarinetist Evan Christopher. Evan's a friend of mine, someone I really look up to for how he has studied the lineage of his instrument, the lineage of New Orleans music, and he still finds a way to play it today with his own voice, with his own groups. Um, I always love following him. I always love playing with him. And now that we've been in this crazy time of quarantine over many months, I want to hear how things are going down in the Crescent City. Mr. Christopher, how are you doing today? I'm here. You're here. I'm doing, I'm doing well. I'm we're on circumstances, you know. We're, we're, we're having, um, so far, a relatively mild summer. Uh, doesn't always have to be that way, but of course, we're only um, we're only in mid-August, uh, and already we have storms, tropical storms number uh, twelve and thirteen brewing in the Atlantic. So I won't speak too soon, but so far so good. Yeah, I mean New Orleans is such a convergence that way. It's a convergence of climates. It's a convergence of geography. It's a convergence of cultures. It always has been in the history of jazz music, and also I think this year New Orleans was a convergence of. Uh, jazz as it re relates to COVID, obviously going back to Mardi Gras and all the festivals that were going on back in February, New Orleans was hit pretty hard from a COVID perspective. Um, so tell me, how is the city feeling? How is the city doing right now? And as a musician there, what has your experience been? And what are you seeing going on in the musical community around you? So our calendar looks like this. Um, uh, our city's administration pretty much shut things down officially um, around the weekend, around March, uh, March 12th and 13th. Uh, that, was when, that was when things pretty much officially got shut down, and that was in response to what they learned. And New Orleans did a better job than the rest of the state of Louisiana about, about trying to, um, uh, trying to limit that speed uh, and rate of infection. Um, our hospitals were never, were never overwhelmed. Um, there was a lot of, there was a lot of, a lot more happening in New Orleans to protect the citizenry than was happening necessarily in other parts of this part of the country, including other parts of Louisiana. And now really most of the, most of the worst things that you're hearing about what's happening here are, are mostly due to the state statistics and less with the city. Nonetheless, we are still pretty much um, shut down. Uh, we've talked about phases, or we've spoken in phases, and we are not officially out of phase two. And all of our students that um, went back to school um, basically only went to their living rooms. <laughs> I mean, don't forget, even New Orleans, we have uh, probably one fourth of the city is actually without internet access. So right now we're in a phase where the city really wants to know from the culture community what to do to continue because they're not letting us open the clubs back. Um, the activity that you're seeing is, is very, very limited and no small businesses uh, can operate at 25 to 50% of their capacity. Right. Um, so uh, some of our clubs that are getting in the act, uh, Tipitina's is starting some, um, starting some uh, broadcasting. Um, uh, some small, um, uh, some of our recording studios are kind of getting in there, but uh, you know, none of it's going to replace that that type of relation and connection, uh, those relationships and the connection that this music uh, makes this music uh, most gives it its most potency and, and meaning. Well, speaking of social media, I just got to see you on social media a couple weeks ago because you were organizing this fundraiser celebration event of Louis Armstrong's second birthday, not the July 4th birthday, but the August 4th birthday. And you were working with the Louis Armstrong House Museum. You know, one of the gems in this whole country is Louis Armstrong's house in Corona, Queens. Anyone watching, if you haven't been there, support them, go there when it's safe to do so. Um, it's, it's really an incredible thing that, that they offer all of us to step into the world of Louis Armstrong. But tell me, Evan, a little bit about 
what you were doing with them and, and what that mission is. You know, it's really funny, Riley. Uh, I ended up reaching out to, to Ricky Riccardi at the Armstrong House because I was thinking we, we just had to can't, we, we canceled our Satchmo Summerfest, which is when people like him would be coming down and we would all be celebrating uh, Louis Armstrong in the first weekend of August, which seems like a funny time to have a festival outside in New Orleans, but we, we've been doing it for 20 years and people love it. Yeah. Um, but it's like, well, you know, Ricky, you're not down here. What are you guys doing for the fourth? I was thinking maybe just, just to have a, a theme for one of my programs. I thought, well, I should do something for the fourth. And, and that it gradually rolled itself into um, making a concert with the Blue Note um, in uh, benefit for the Armstrong house. And then the problem with that is, is I didn't want to be the only person doing something. Mm -hmm. So I had, I reached out to a lot of people to see if they could, if we could turn it into something bigger. And then it kind of, it kind of grew and grew. I gave you a shout and uh, some other New York musicians contributed some people from Europe and we turned it into something in a very short amount of time using this broadcast software that, that I've been using and just, you know, basically expanding our use and our, our, our use of these tools. Uh, and that's how that happened. It really came out, let, came less out of me saying, I, I want to help the Armstrong house and me more like me saying, you know, we just, we need to have a, a narrative where these partnerships are, if, if we're going to have a narrative of these partnerships and our traditions being connected to the community, well, we got to put our money where our mouth is and, yeah. and, and make those connections real in, in, in some way. So that's how that came about. And it's, well, it's that, that makes sense because it just speaks to your generosity. And, and I think it's so wonderful. And I was honored to be a part of that. Um, but, you know, when we when we did that thing together, you're doing, it's the same thing. What you're doing is very important. You're answering the call mm -hmm. to to make. Um, to make these connections real. Do we have a community or not? Right. Do we have a music community or not? And does our music community, is it a cultural community that serves the larger community? Right. Right. You're answering that question by doing what you're doing. We're in, the New Orleans musicians are answering it by doing what we're attempting to do by, stay, by staying engaged and, um, you know, even if it's in a virtual format. But yeah. without that, you know how can how can we really how can we really keep bragging about how great our cultural you know assets are? Amen. Well, on that note, I wonder is there a tune we can play together today in in the spirit of everything you just said? So you talked about the Armstrong thing, and you know Ricky's been bragging about this new mosaic set that's coming right. out that has a lot of the uh, the um, uh, some new material from the recordings with W.C. Hand uh, that uh, Louis Armstrong did of W.C. Handy's music. And so I thought we would do Careless Love. But here's the deal. I, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not originally from New Orleans. I came here in the mid-90s. 1994 was the first time I got here. And I, I'm happy to talk about what's happening, but I'm not, uh, I'm never comfortable speaking for the community. Um, you know, um, I, for whatever reason, I seem to, I seem to find my way into these meetings with the city planning council and our commission and try to find out what's happening. And I, I, I kind of straddle these two worlds of, of, of engagement, but I felt like we needed to have a real New Orleans musician with us. So uh, I, I have a surprise for you. Um, Do you? We got my friend Don Vappy. Whoa. I wanted to bring him in for okay. old blues called Careless Love, or renamed by uh, W.C. Handy as Loveless Love. Well, what a treat for us today. Evan, thank you for hanging. Thank you for sharing a little bit about all you've been up to and all that's going on in New Orleans right now. And what an right. honor to have the great Don Baffy with us today. Thanks for, thanks for keeping, uh, keeping some eyes on New Orleans, because uh, we have, uh, through our traditions and through the way we engage culture, you know, we're not doing everything right, but we're, you know, we have a lot to teach other communities about how to use their, uh, to use their musicians uh, as an asset. And I'm not talking just about, you know, attracting tourists. I'm talking about actually using the music. And Louis Armstrong is basically our role model for all of that. Using the music and using our traditions to, one, keep people connected, but two, give them a sense of connection to their own history and their past
to help them find solutions and help them find ways of coping with what's happening today and what might be coming down the road tomorrow. I'll cry and cry no 